we need an explanation of when people are autonomous. Um, and that means that we're going to have to uh, have a theory of what autonomy is. And this is where things do get controversial um, and tricky and hard to parse. But don't worry, because we're not actually going to go into the details of basically any theories. But I do want to give you just a little flavor of kind of what's at stake. There's a bunch of different families of theory out there. Uh, one very straightforward kind of theory uh, is just going to give you kind of like a, um, it's just going to give you a list. It, it's basically going to, so one very straightforward kind of theory is just going to try to define, uh, kind of nail down what needs to be going on for you in order for you to be autonomous. So what do I mean by that? Well, they're going to give you a um, kind of like a list of things that are good, things that are valuable, things that you need in order to be autonomous. So on some of these theories, uh, Feinberg, I believe I have in the notes um, as an example, of one of these, you know, he says like, well, what do you need to be autonomous? Well, you need certain kinds of abilities. So you're going to need to be able to think rationally. You're going to need be able to have some kind of minimal level of self-control. And you're going to need to uh, sort of be free from interference in a lot of ways, right? So if somebody, you know, grabs you and puts you in a box, um, you're not going to be capable of being autonomous because, well, a lot of the things you want to do in your life aren't going to be possible from within the box. Now, obviously, there's things like adaption and blah, blah, blah. But let's not worry about that. The basic idea for these kind of theories, and that they're often called like substantive theories, is they just define the substance of what of autonomy is. You know, they'll give you kind of a checklist. On the other side of this, and actually the, I'm way oversimplifying because there's a lot of different families, um, but another prominent kind of view uh, are what's called formal theories. So these are the kind of theories that don't want to say, oh, if you want this kind of thing, you're not going to be autonomous, or you need to want that in order to be autonomous, right? What these theories, so what a, a, that's what a substantive theory is going to do. But a formal theory is going to basically just tell you that, um, well, let me just give you an example because that might be the easiest way to see this. Um, so Frankfurt is sort of one of the more uh, famous uh, formal theorists. And he basically is just says that as long as you've got your desires lined up in the right ways, so you're going to, you know, want stuff and then you're going to think about what you want. Um, and some of the things that you, some of the desires you, you have, um, you're going to form those second order desires about, you know, you're going to want to want those things, or you're going to want those things to be what actually moves you to act in certain situations. Right. So, Beyond that, though, as long as you got everything lined up, he's got nothing to say about what it is you should want, right? So somebody like uh, Feinberg, um, he might, you know, somebody who is a substantive theory is probably going to tell you stuff like, well, you know, to be autonomous, you have to want um, to be free of, um, you know, too much influence from other people. Or you, you have to want to um, pursue your own, pursue 